be back. Name's Bill Cipher. What the? No, 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 no! You're making a mistake! I'll give you anything! Money, fame, riches, infinite power, your own galaxy, please! Hello, Internet. Jojo here. And before you say anything, do you know how hard it is to find a triangle-shaped chip that's not Doritos? I didn't have any Doritos on hand, so I had to use... Lays. Hashtag not spawn. Hashtag would be spawned if you wanted to, Lays. But hashtag probably wouldn't be spawned because I'm a nobody. Anyways. Today, I want to talk about Bill Cipher killing Time Baby. And if you don't know who Bill Cipher is, or Time Baby, for that matter, well, then, obviously, you haven't watched the show Gravity Falls. But essentially... Here we go. Name's Bill, but you can call me your new lord and master for all of eternity. Surrender now or face my tantrum. Oh no, a tantrum. Whatever will I do about that? How about this? Oh, <gasps> <gasps> oh snap! He just killed Time Baby. So this scene here is what I want to talk about today. This has always been interesting to me because Time Baby is an entity of pure time. He can grant paradox-free wishes from people, and he just kind of hands them out to anyone who wins a random tournament. So that's always been really interesting to me, because technically, that would mean that Bill Cipher killed a being capable of both creating and stopping paradoxes, which makes Time Baby a lot more like the Reverse Flash. But Bill Cipher was actually able to kill him in one shot, and that's really interesting. So I want to know how much power would be required, because really the only way to really even hurt Time Baby is to be able to generate enough power to stop time completely, right? So that's what we're going to talk about, because I calculated it. Yes, I calculated the power required to stop time. I'm a nerd, I know. There are many theories about how time actually works, but one of the most common, I believe, states that time is caused by the expansion of the universe itself. As you might know, the universe is constantly in a state of expansion, and it's actually expanding at a speed faster than light. So if this is how time works, then to stop time, you would need power equivalent to that of the kinetic energy of the expanding universe, right? Stay with me. So how fast is the universe expanding? That's not as simple as it sounds, because the closer you get to the center, the slower it is going. So, at the very center of all creation is not moving at all, pretty much. But the farther you get out from there, the faster it gets. Meaning that, at the edge of the universe, you're moving at speeds far faster than light, but speeds at the very center are moving slower than an infant. So the speed of the expanding universe has been calculated to be about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Now this is going to get confusing very quickly. So, for the record, unlike in Star Wars, where a parsec is treated as a measurement of time, it is not. A parsec is a measurement of distance, and in this case, a megaparsec is defined as about 3.26 million light years. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. The universe itself is just over 46.5 billion light years in radius. So. Well, shoot. Hello there, future Jojo here. Now I bet you're wondering, what does he mean by, oh, shoot? And I'm here to tell you that. Well, you see, I was an idiot, and I might have made a slight itty teeny itty bitty mistake by accidentally taking away a zero at the very beginning of the formula. Which, as you can guess, proceeded to mess up the entire formula and about three and a half minutes of video. So, we're going to have to do this all over again. Stick with me. Please. So, by dividing the radius of the universe in light years by the number of light years in a megaparsec, we can convert the light years to megaparsecs. So, doing this, and we can find that the universe, known universe at least, has a radius of over 142,000 megaparsecs. And clearly, to get the diameter of the universe, you would just double that, as radius is just half of diameter. It's how math works. So, multiply the radius in megaparsecs by the speed of the universe per megaparsec, and we find that the universe is at its very fastest 
is moving at over 32 times the speed of light. Now this is where like quantum mechanics and stuff comes into play. So technically it's probably not moving at this fast speed of light because of quantum particles that do stuff and maybe it's it that's getting this stuff way above my pay grade and honestly that's not what we're here for so with the universe moving at about 32 times the speed of light at its fastest we can average it with its very slowest speed which we're going to assume to be 37 kilometers per second and we find that on average the universe is moving at about 10 trillion miles per hour or basically just slicing that 32 times the speed of light in half to about 16 times the speed of light that's not exact just off the top of my head so now, so now they have the average speed that the universe is expanding we now need to know the universe's mass because kinetic energy requires both mass and speed or velocity speed is a weird concept but velocity constant speed now there are so so many different estimates of the universe's actual weight so many and they range from having 53 zeros behind the number to 60. So the number we're going to be using for this calculation is about 1.5 centisecond kilograms. So it's 1.5 with 53 zeros. So taking these two numbers and plugging them into the formula for kinetic energy, and we find that Bill Cipher and Time Baby and time itself in real life, possibly, probably not, quantum mechanics and all that, must be capable of generating a kinetic energy of nearly 1.7 tres vigintillion joules, which is about 432 times the energy to destroy the universe itself. So if you took all the power that the universe had by moving and slammed it into the universe itself, it would be annihilated beyond belief. So this is incredibly, absurdly massive. It wouldn't make sense for Bill to be able to do this, but I mean, it also would make sense because he's destroyed the universe before and he's even... He's done a lot. Bill's done an absurd amount and has absurd levels of power. But the big issue with this is, I don't know if this is applicable to an actual versus scenario, because this is very theoretical in the formula and the topic, because we really just don't know a whole lot about math this big. When you get to things this big, it's incredibly difficult to actually justify it. Because I saw some articles that said that time was not caused by the expansion of the universe but then i saw others that said it was so if you're debating someone keep this in mind but it really shouldn't be your top argument i mean i don't think anyone's arguing that bill cypher could destroy the universe if he wanted to i mean he destroyed his own universe and he killed time baby so those two things by themselves are more than enough to justify him being universe level but he also controls you know space and matter and all that stuff which are also fundamental concepts of the universe bill cypher is one crazy dorito but like I said, take this math and this calculation with a grain of Dorito dust, because we just don't know. It could be this, it could also not be this. But I just have wanted to calculate the power to destroy time itself for a long time, and I felt that the simpler you get, the more likely you are to be accurate, because you can get pretty complicated with this stuff, but then you make one slight mistake at any point, and you could be, have vastly different results. So with all that said, guys, thank you for watching. See you next time. Remember to stay spectacular. Jojo.